guys playing? We're playing Kick the Autistic! Can I play? Sure! We could kick you instead! <sighs> gotcha! Look! He just sneezed! Let's bitch about it on our forum! They don't let us talk about that anymore! What? But I want to spread! Let's go to 4chan! <sighs> Fast car! I have created a new weapon that will end this war with the trolls once and for all! I'll send it to you! Yes, we can finish this. Right here, right now. What? Right now? Transporting it may take some time. How long? Uh, about the time it would take to review a light reader comic. Oh, you can shove that plot convenience right up your- Welcome to a top of fifth war where the chorus comics burn. The car chan's gonna teach you all a lesson you won't learn. Today's reference clips in place of actual humor. Whatever the fuck I feel like. Taking a look at the cover and we see that Linkara still can't get over how awesome he thinks the gradient tool is, despite the fact that he doesn't know how to use it properly. Despite his shitty artwork in the past, he saw a slow and gradual improvement in his covers, but here he has taken a huge step back. And after doing some history on the main villain on the front cover, rainbows have absolutely nothing to do with the smiling man. One can assume that since Linkara was at college at the time, he must have experimented with some reefer and thought that rainbows were just the shit, bro. <laughs> On the next page, we're introduced to the smiling man killing someone for some object. You people are much too tensed, too unnerved by the simple little things I do. It's all for the best, really. Someday you'll understand that. In the meantime, you can just follow my strategy. Don't meet challenges like this with anger or fear. Do it with a smile. And already we can see that he has killed someone because he is doing something that is for the best. In other words, more ends justify the means bullshit. And we are only on the third page. Good to see that Linkara is good at writing diverse villains. On the next page, we can see his trademark terrible speech bubbles. You bought a breast expansion device off of eBay? What the fuck? I have a small chest and a lot of extra money thanks to working here. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake! I'm still getting over what I saw last time when you pulled this crap. What, did he finally realize she was hot after seeing the fan art and thought his creation had small breasts? I swear I'm this close to calling him a furry. Fuck. You. So anyway, the ramble about how she shouldn't do it because you're reinforcing modern sexist ideas or some crap. Nakara says that it's her choice and to get back to work. The commentary below says that the device is from another comic, making this a crossover. Let's take a look at this dimension hopping comic to see who he is circle jerking with. After clicking, the first thing I see is a naked cat girl on a tree. God fucking damn it! So this is nothing more than a perverted crossover with a furry comic? I swear all we need is a bit of pedophilia and it's confirmed. Anyway, on the next page they continue bitching about the morality of a tit job and then Hannah asks to be Lightbringer's assistant since she found out he was the Lightbringer. To her surprise, he accepts right away for the following reason. First, I'm the only superhero in the world, so I could use some assistance. Second, I've had a day to think about it, so I already know what your argument on the matter is. Come downstairs. I need to suit up. Wait, what was that at the end? Come downstairs. I need to suit up. So... He wants an underage girl to follow him downstairs so he can take off his clothes? After seeing him proclaiming that he's aroused by 2D images, drawing his own pawn, he's parallels to Christian, defending furries, and now this? Louis Fuckpig! Confirmed furfag! Yes, I'm resorting to childish insults. That's what he gets for exposing me to this shit. 
Billy Mays here for the Catch Out Switch, the new wireless light switch that lets you control and catch up from anywhere. Billy Mays has the big dick. Also, apparently there are some robberies and they need Fuck Pig's help. On the next page, Fuck Pig explains his backstory to Hannah. So yeah, that's my story. So cool, you're kind of like Batman with superpowers. Well, I suppose you could say that, but I'm certainly not as smart as Batman. And I can't breathe in space. Not only do we get a pointless reference to Batman breathing in space, but we get a practical admission that his character is nothing more than a blatant ripoff of Batman. And over the next panel, he has his own fucking bat signal. Folks, we have entered irate gamer territory. And to think he mocked the RA Gamer as an April Fool's joke. On the next page, Commissioner Gordon tells him that the Smiling Man takes small things of little value, but because he has killed people, to the point of leaving just ashes, he needs the help of Lightbringer. On his way to find him, we go right back to talking about ticks again. Great! All they end up talking about is if it's to impress some guy, and they make a reference to her friend Rose. Upon reading the commentary, and we have another cameo for the webcomic crossover and cameo archive. Hannah's friend Rose that she mentions here, and pictured in the window on the right, is actually from the MA rated comic, due to its language and adult situations, shredding ground. Really, it was just an excuse to use Rose in this comic since after reading her, I always thought her and Hannah would be friends. Yep, another pointless reference. On a side note, and now we see the breast enlargement device itself! Pay attention to the subplot, puny mortals! Well, it turns out she has received the device. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> On the next page, fuck me, I'm sick of this looking like an epic comic. Lightbringer breaks in to arrest the Smiling Man. The Smiling Man, though, acts like he has done all this before, possibly because he's read a Batman comic, and says he has beaten him before. While that may sound interesting, he starts going on a tangent about how a black and white view of the universe is wrong and naive. In other words, he's the same fucking villain as last time. On the next page, he tries to blast him, but it doesn't work. Smiling Man has the same creepy smile Nazi Bringer did when he beat up people for the first time and decides to blast him. Fuck, this panel structure's retarded, but at least it isn't using excessive dialogue like he usually does. Let's read the commentary. Sadly, not a lot of dialogue. That's a good thing, you fucking idiot! No wonder this comic is terrible. He genuinely believes that adding a lot of text makes it better. If I had a ton of speech bubbles everywhere, it would look stupid and intrusive now, wouldn't it? Let's read the rest. And there's a gradient background. But for the first time, we just saw Lightbringer get smacked by a special effect. Wow! There's a tool in Photoshop called the Outer Glow Tool, which it looks like he used. A 10-year-old can find out how to use it with the help of Google. Congratulations, Linkara. You're as intelligent as a 10-year-old. Bravo! 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 Wow! And did I make the Smiling Man creepy in that panel? Huh? Huh? Did I? Look at him desperately seek approval, just like he did when he wanted fan art. Either he has no friends, or his father kept telling him that he never accomplished anything. Or he beat him regularly. Power! Power! Good to see he- <laughs> See, he isn't learning a thing. Despite all that text, it really is a whole lot of nothing. He just rambles on about how hard it is to beat him. Oh, and those white things at the bottom? They're supposed to be daggers. What, did he forget how to use the line tool he loves so much? They look like giant squirts of jizz. Miraculously, on this page, he decided not to be lazy and continues to fight him physically. But this page reveals one problem. If you look at pages 11, 12, and then 14 in that order, you will see that page 13 was completely useless. 
it would accurately convey that his powers don't work on the smiling man, which means that the last page was nothing more than him having a big expository wank. And after giving you a break, he comes back for sloppy seconds. And yes, it is still the same shit. Just him boring about how hard it is to fight the guy, with the only difference being that he is running away like a bitch. I guess pacifism isn't so bad when you're getting your ass kicked, huh? What a fucking coward. <laughs> They're totally gay! He continues rambling about losing, but I have to read this part to show you another problem I have with this page. I land. No, I crash into the roof of my store. Hannah helps me back down into the store. It's strange. Only her first day doing this, and already she's proving herself invaluable to me. Here's the thing. Comic books are a visual medium. When you want to tell a story, you focus on what you see, not what you say. When you just explain what he's doing rather than drawing it, it is either gross incompetence on his part or flat out laziness. Knowing him, it was probably both. On another note, Hannah tells him to rest until the smiling man arrives. Before I explain the rest of the comic, I have to announce that this is the last one panel page out of the first four issues. When you count how many of them there are and find out its percentage in relation to the amount of tonal pages, you'll find out that about one quarter of all his pages are lazy one panel pages. And even then there were many times where he only did two large panels, but that statistic is alarmingly telling. As for the text, I haven't been reading them out for the most part because they are written like a damn novel, both in volume of words and style. All he needed here was a couple of reaction shots and to have the words drastically trimmed down. In fact, I'll cross out some of it right now. I'm not a threat to him. He knew the instant he started killing people and stealing that junk for whatever reason. But that begs the question. If I'm not a threat to him at all, why did he even bother coming here? If you end up getting curious and read all of it, you're wasting your time. That summarizes exactly what he says and removes his redundant writing. Want a chili dog? Sure! On the next page, Hannah decides to fight him, but she fails horribly, which leads to Nazi Bringer asking why he is here. His response? Don't worry, Carter. I'm not here to kill you. This is just a surprise and coincidence. I'm here for that. A breast enlarging device? What, are you hoping to become the smiling transsexual? So, he decided to bring up male transsexuals with breast implants? You know what? Fuck staying classy. The car, you're just trolling now. I am Liz! Take a look at that! It's the power spot your eyes are being raped at the moment! It's the one you couldn't beat up the small man! I am Liz always dominated you and made you this bitch! I am Liz! I am Liz! I am Liz! What the? Ah, fuck! Biggie Smalls, Biggie Smalls, Biggie Smalls! Phew, that was close. So anyway, the smiling man takes the breast enlargement device so he can travel to another dimension and seduce Linkara. Nightsy Bringer tries to stop him going through the portal, but fails, dooming Linkara to betray his Christian values and turn gay. The end. Billy Mace is watching your mom in the shower right now. Watch this. The handy switch. Gotta see this! Now you're probably wondering how the Smiling Man saga concludes. Well, I can gladly tell you that it is never resolved in an issue of Lightbringer. What a fucking cop out! It gets resolved one and a half years later in a giant webcomic crossover! That's right, the whole point of this comic was to hype up some crossover he did with other webcomic artists, who, might I add, have more talent in their pinkies than he will ever have! In fact, when you really look back at the times I flashed the That Girl the Glasses logo, you will notice something. All the crossover and cameo stuff that is abused on That Girl the Glasses today, 
Linkara was doing that shit on a regular basis in his webcomics. In fact, in later issues, he continued to do this. With this evidence, I can conclude that all those pointless cameos on that guy with the glasses? It's all your fault! All those crappy crossover reviews where both of them have the same opinion about a shitty movie, making the crossover pointless? It's all your fault! All those crappy circle jerk films they release every year that even Film Brain hates? It's all your fault! The pointless references to other bits of entertainment now used as a substitute for jokes? It's all your fault! Anyway, back onto the smiling man himself. Basically, the smiling man is a former superhero who discovered how to travel through dimensions once he retired and became a scientist. He does this with his wife, but it causes her to merge with alternate versions of herself, which causes some Zordon-like figure to kill her because it would fuck shit up. Because of this, the smiling man has to destroy everything! Because, you know, he lost his wife and wants revenge, therefore, the ends justify the means! Look, I have to be honest here, this example isn't as stupid and poorly written as his past villains, hence why he needed to make a big fucking crossover for it, but this still doesn't excuse the weak characterization. All we see is a couple of panels showing that they got married and did science together, and then she died. It's supposed to be tragic, but when you barely see the relationship between the two, quite frankly, I couldn't give a crap about her and would barely bat an eyelid if her body was grave robbed by necrophiliacs. Gears of War 2 pulled the same bullshit with Dom's wife. We had all this build up about how he wanted to see his wife and how important she is to him, but we don't know anything about her. She's just his wife. Spoilers here for the game, but when you finally see her, she's dead and they try to play it serious. It's actually so bad, it's hilarious. I don't care because you, the storyteller, didn't make me care enough about a dead character because you were lazy in giving a backstory and developing a relationship for me to like and feel sad about when it's gone. And that's why the smiling man's tragedy is no big deal. It is nothing more than a case of dead wife, lol. Oh, and by the way, his artwork is easily the worst of the bunch. The other artists are so much more talented than him that it's not funny. The disparity is so large that I have to question, why work with him? It's like the one guy who was old enough to buy beer for everyone so they act nice to him even though he's a loser. The only difference here is that I don't see what they have to gain from teaming with him. Okay, before I end this, I better turn off the angry shtick so people know when I was serious and when I wasn't, rather than hiding behind the IT'S JUST A CHARACTER EXCUSE. No more jokes, insults, bullshit, furry accusations, and Chris Chan comparisons. It's time to be serious for a moment. Heh, <laughs> Lance Storm. The comic is a prime example of what happens when a first year college student starts writing stories. It's awfully pretentious and insanely preachy without any sense of subtlety whatsoever, at least initially. But, as is the case with his artwork, he definitely gets a lot better, in particular around issues 7 to 8 where it isn't quite as stupid. Granted, it isn't amazing or anything, and nor does it go beyond being very average even by non-professional standards, it's just awfully bland. And this leads me to the core problem. Despite the terrible page layouts, ugly artwork and laughable storylines, all these issues aren't a part of the core problem in the end. All these issues are very fixable and towards the middle stages of the comic, about issues 6 to 8, all these insanely obvious problems are gone. What doesn't go away is the terribly bland and boring characters. Many have pointed out before, it is obvious that Lightbringer is a Mary Sue. For those uninitiated, it is essentially when the main character is nothing more than the author inserted into the story, and more often than not they are painted as having no flaws. And that is the problem with Lightbringer. Eventually once Linkara's preachy crap dies down, we are left with this bland Superman archetype. While I'm sure there are plenty of Superman comics that have toyed with his backstory and character flaws that I'm unaware of, the Superman most people know is the boring, perfect Superman. And when you compare him to other characters like Wolverine for example, he is nowhere near as interesting. Even in X-Men you see this, while at least in the cartoon, and possibly the comics, Cyclops was painted as the leader that we should all root for, but let's face it, no one gives two shits about Cyclops. Why? Because he's boring, uninteresting, and too perfect, which is why they made him a douchebag in the movie so he can be more interesting. Wolverine is more universally liked in the group because he's the anti-hero, 
He has a mysterious past and his attitude is more aggressive and rebellious. His flaws and strengths are obvious, but that makes him more interesting because he has a character and personality. In Dragon Ball Z the same thing happens. We're supposed to care about Goku, but in the end Vegeta becomes more well liked because he isn't the morally perfect Jesus character Goku is. Here is a man who was destined to rule over his entire race and be the strongest of them all. He feels that being the best was his birthright and here comes Goku exceeding him no matter how hard he tries. His insane desire to be the best at all costs plus his anti-hero personality make him way more interesting because he has a character. He's inconsiderate, power hungry and rude but he is determined and motivated. This brings me back to Lightbringer. He is the Superman, Cyclops or Goku of this world. He's boring, he never has to deal with any of his character flaws, change or grow as a character. Outside of the initial issue when he was used as a straw man against pacifism. He stays as the same morally perfect superhero who is flawless. He stays the same as Linkara is in real life and because the character is essentially Linkara he's not going to see any massive flaws in Lightbringer's personality. That would require him to look into his own problems in real life. When looking at the crossover lord, when other people wrote his character they noticed a flaw in Linkara's character right away. In the comic he was overly uptight, extremely judgmental and high and mighty. In fact at one point Lightbringer gets punched by another character for acting like only he knows what is right. But even then, compared to the other characters who are funny and have personality, he sticks out as the boring one, again very Cyclops like in X-Men. In his comic he is not painted with flaws, which is a shame because it would make him a much more interesting character if he was. But sometimes these types of heroes can get away with being boring if their villains are more interesting. Batman, when you analyse him, isn't quite as deep as other heroes out there but his villains are usually well developed and are often the star. Lightbringers on the other hand, aren't. While he seems to try to make them more than just boring cartoony villains, he ultimately fails because their justification for their actions are lousy and not believable, even in later issues. This is a sin in writing good antagonists, making them human and having their actions be understandable is a key to a great villain. Magneto for example is a great villain because you can understand him no longer being passive and patient with people who won't give him the same respect for being different. Linkara's villains though are straw men for the ends justify the means argument and often do such extreme things like enslave, kill and sell people for charity that they end up becoming a joke. A good realistic conflict has two sides to it, just like the real ones do when you really analyse it. My last point I need to bring up is the interaction between characters. Like the rest of the comic, it is boring. Hannah is a sidekick and then what? Does she question some of his actions? Does she help him learn things he may not have learned on his own? No. In fact when any of the characters interact it is mundane and boring. They don't have anything interesting to say because their personalities don't vary. The crossover lord on the other hand doesn't have this problem because I must admit the people who wrote the dialogue knew the characters well and created conflict between them. In particular the interaction between Dazen, an obnoxious, dumb, loud go-getter with a ton of energy who goes balls in no questions asked and my mistress, a calm, intelligent character who likes to plan things through, is hilarious because despite their differences they bounce off each other so well and develop a love-hate relationship. This doesn't happen in Lightbringer, it is usually about what is going on in the big picture, which is usually nonsensical, that is the focus, making everything in between dull and forgettable. Character development is put on hold in order for Linkara to preach his views. Overall, it is the lack of any real characters that is the problem in this comic. The obvious flaws go away in time, but the poorly written and uninteresting characters stay, at least until issue 12 since I didn't read anything beyond that. A good story will come naturally if you have created well developed and interesting characters interacting with each other, but with the characters in Lightbringer it won't happen. Today we execute our greatest attack yet! With our forum censored by the betraying Britbag and his attack dogs, we will let those at the goal of classes know how much we hate them with a full blown DDoS attack! Yeah! We will finally burst their bubble by hiding and make their pathetic fanboys cry! Yeah! They will finally know how traumatized and clinically depressed we became when we were merely banned from an internet message board! Yeah! Yeah! We're awesome! Now let's DDoS these assholes! Yeah! Hurry up! 
It will be there in a moment. What I have sent is the Iron Banghammer. It is a pair of guns created from the soul of a dead girl who was killed by her parents. Yes, that will do. It was you, wasn't it? Well, if you could find an easier way to stop people from trolling you, I'd like to hear it. Whatever. How's it work? It's a pair of guns. Point and shoot, you idiot. Oh, and by the way, it'll also make you giant. What? What the hell is going on? I am a Megazord. Don't forget to buy your I Am A Megazord t-shirt at the super awesome, totally not overcompensating in any way Superstore for only $39.95! Order now and receive a free autograph of me, normally valued at $7! Hurry before they're all sold out! You don't want to be the only person at an anime convention without one! I Am A Megazord, the coolest quote around! Fucking shot! It's about time I took care of all of you! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Camera mugging! <laughs> Excellent! We've got out the way! I can go back to focus thing on my forum! Let's see here. What? I'm not as good as I was in 2008! You're banned! What else we got? So you are so stick my new thing song sucks! BAND! Ah, what else? Ah, oh, I was too aggressive towards the guy that responded to my deadliest worry event! BAND! Ah, 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 ah. BAND! 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 Where is that theology of gaming guy? I could really use his experience moderating the escapist right about now! Here I am, sleepless. Mm, let's see here. Ha! So you thought you could mention Adblock, did you? Not on my watch. Using Adblock on websites with inspiring and transcending content is like stealing food from starving African children. You're banned! <laughs> this is going perfectly! I'm so lonely. Band, band, band! Your mother's name is Arbanel! I'll kick your ass, man! Enjoy your do nothing English degree, you spongy fuck! Die! How does it feel to white knight females without ever fucking one without a penis? I don't have time for sexism. Before you do this, think really hard about why you are doing it. You see, we aren't just normal trolls giving you shit for the hell of it. We are former fans who were a part of your community. But because you and your fans couldn't accept criticism, we were shunned from communities we felt like we were a part of. We loved your work and all we wanted was for you to improve so we could be fans forever. So please, put down your guns, spare me, and just accept some constructive criticism? Sorry, not buying it. Well, fuck you, Aspie! Only weeaboos and furries like your shitty show anyway! Enjoy your three-year unemployment gap on your resume! Employers are gonna love that! In ten years, you're gonna be the blood of your entire family! The only reason you moved out of your parents' basement was because I sent you a letter saying you were in grave danger! Your ban is permanent and is not set to expire! Now you're using shitty one-liners, you fucking- Phew. Now that the trolls have been dealt with, I can live in my bubble of constant praise and love. <clears throat> Let's have a look. Yes, my storyline should get an Oscar. Yeah, it is a shame I'm not considered a professional journalist. Ah, you're right. I should go to Washington and protest so far. I'm important enough to make a difference. Those poor kids who get money from our charity draft can go without this year. Run! Dun dun dun! Run! Dun 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 dun!